very pleased to be joined by George Affleck, one of the opposition councillors for the MPA to the Vision Vancouver Controlled City Hall. And George, uh, this has been an eventful week. Obviously, you had the council pass the, uh, the, uh, the budget yesterday and a tax increase. So why don't we start with that? The property taxes are going up for the city of Vancouver. But uh, more recently, this idea that the 0.5% increase to help with the fentanyl issue came up. And it sort of seemed to come out of nowhere last week when the mayor was away. Just talk about what uh, your position on that was, how you voted. And uh, if you think really we need more tax increases in a city where property values have skyrocketed, therefore the city should be collecting more dollars, right? Well, there's uh, not always a relationship between the price of a home and, and their taxation. You know, we're based on the taxation increases based on the budget. So it's increasing the overall budget. So my challenge is that uh, year after year since Vision got elected, it's been significant increases. And I, I look back over the last eight years and it turns out uh, that uh, taxes, uh, accumulated taxes and, uh, and service fees, so sewer, water, that kind of stuff, uh, have valued at about 30% increase to the taxpayers since Vision got elected. Uh, to give you a perspective on that, uh, it, the population's only gone up by 10%. So if we just base it on that, the the property or the cost of the taxpayer has gone up three times the speed of the, of the of the population. And I think that's just one perspective and one way to look at it. But it's been very challenging for me uh, to help people understand the impact. Everybody goes, oh, my taxes have gone up. But it's really it hasn't really resonated. Uh, and this year, we're seeing a three, now a 3.9% tax increase on the property, plus a 1.2% average uh, increase on the services. So a 5.1% co uh, cost increase to the people of the city. Worse if you're a business. Uh, it's four times worse if you're a business. So, and then they threw in this 0.5, which actually, in the, it, it's, I don't agree with it, with the way the, pro, the not only the, what the tax is doing, but also the way the process that we went through. Uh, but what it did do is it suddenly it's resonated to the, peop to the people of the city. Suddenly, people are talking more than I've seen in five years in office about taxation and the fact that they've had enough, absolutely enough. Mm -hmm. And this, one of the things that concerns me is seeing the 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 sort of the expansion of the bureaucracy here at City Hall. I mean, more than ever, we see hundred thousand dollar salaries given out to more people than ever before. I think the the mayor has a twenty something person communications team. Um, is there? Anything, any possibility that the taxpayer could see some of this money coming back to them at some point rather than simply expanding uh, the spending down here at City Hall? Well, there are two components in the, in, the, in the reason our taxes went up much higher than the rate of inflation, and there were two areas specifically. One was related to the Vancouver Economic Commission, which I have often called some sort of uh, slush fund organization for the mayor's uh, private uh, junkets to, to travel around the world. Uh, uh, they got an extra bunch of money uh, from us, and then uh, the um, uh, the new f uh, bureaucracy we've created to deal with the uh, empty homes tax, and that is uh, uh, two and a half million dollars a year. So that represents uh, another half percent there, um, and so we're creating this whole new bureaucracy. Of course, the goal of that, which I don't believe, is to get more taxation from empty homes, and and it will pay for itself. But I, I'm skeptical of that and voted against that because I think it's not going to work. It's not going to do what it has to do. Uh, so you know that the that there there are lots of areas uh, to, for room for improvement. Uh, one of the challenges I have, you would think that if you get a, a budget, uh, it would have uh, at least a couple of pages of spreadsheets together with each department, you know, so you can look at it with clarity. Mm -hmm. uh, we've never had that since being uh, since I've been elected, and Visions have never they've they've never presented it in that way. You get a document; it's very large, lots of uh, uh, polling. Uh, in the in ninety percent of it is all this data that they've collected to show to, to argue their points. Um, but gen there's no simple, like a small business has more complex spreadsheets than we have here at the city of Vancouver deciding on a $1.3 billion budget. So I, I have a real challenge. So they ask, oh, well, will you find, George, why don't you go find some places to cut? Well, I would if I could, but I, I don't have enough data in this budget to actually make a truly informed decision to cut or to vote in favor of it. And so that's why for five years in a row, I've, I've voted against the operating budget. Okay, so uh, shifting gears now away from taxation. So there was this other uh, story that broke, I guess, two weeks ago now where uh, Oni, a fairly significant developer here in town, was granted a $1.5 million waiver uh, by mistake, as the city uh, uh, revealed. Um, what did your motion yesterday involve and, and what's going to be the process going forward now to find out exactly what happened there and make sure that we're not giving away those types of uh, waivers to, to construction companies that don't deserve them? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, a uh, journalist, uh, thanks to uh, the, the hard work of a journalist, un uh, uncovered this, uh, this missing money that hadn't been paid. Uh, I think completely by fluke. She was looking at a different story and then 
looked at it side by side, the report and the, the, and the, and the information that she'd received and saw that, that we hadn't received this, this money that we were owed. Uh, so that created a whole huge uh, uh, fiasco, I think, at City Hall, and certainly the city manager, uh, to his credit, took it very seriously. Uh, it was before his watch as city manager, that project and that process. Uh, and so I, you know, I trust that he's taken it very seriously. But I worry that over the last several years that there may be more of these and that we should look into this. And it should not be done by staff. Uh, it should not be done by any organization that we have a relationship with currently, like our auditor. It should be done by a third party. I, I would prefer a sort of ombudsperson, but a third party uh, private company that has no relationship currently with the city to get a, take a deep dive. So I was surprised that my motion actually passed. That doesn't happen very often for me at City Hall. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think Vision also realized that they, for, for transparency and for confidence at City Hall, mm -hmm. it's important for us to do everything we can on this one to ensure that uh, there is nothing untoward uh, on, this, on this or any issue. Now, the mayor told me at the press conference last week it would be KPMG, but uh, it's been revealed, obviously, I think that the, in 2014, 2015, about $1.3 million of work was done for the city by KPMG. That's too close of a relationship for you? Uh, you know, I, 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 you have to put your trust in, in organizations like KPMG. They go through strict standards. And so uh, if it turns out that's the organization, I, I don't think it's a good idea. I think part of this process, their job, in my mind, would have been to catch that. I mean, an audit that they do every year for us is a moment in time, and they, they don't look at every single ledger. Uh, they just do a, a rough analysis, and we spend a lot of money with it, but, uh, and they miss that one. Uh, so in my opinion, it shouldn't be KPMG. It be, KPMG, it should be a, another auditor or a, a government uh, servant from another level of government, perhaps a province or, or the federal government. I'd like to see that as well. Now, moving to the last topic was the topic I broke last week where there appeared to be this strange reference to the China Investment Corporation in an engagement letter from Ernst & Young on the city on this tenuous land swap that I understand you voted against in the beginning. Maybe just uh, talk to our viewers quickly about what your position on that deal was originally back in uh, 2012, 2015, when it was between that time when it was all going down. And then tell us uh, about how that document seemed to have made its way, I mean, it didn't make it to council uh, when it was supposed to. Is that correct? So this project I've never been supportive of. It's a land swap deal, which is one thing. It's a very, that's a very, already a very complex kind of negotiation and, and thing that we do. Uh, but in this case, uh, for, it was on a, a, what I believe to be preserved parkland, potential parkland that we have in the, in the Yale Town area, Richards and Helmkin. Uh, and, you know, and, and also it was to build, uh, the, the swap included building a, uh, what, what Vision calls uh, affordable housing, but I don't call it that because it's not truly affordable. It's one of their rental 100 projects with a few, uh, you know, uh, I think 20 units would be, you know, at, uh, at the 30% uh, income level. Um, so there were some units in the building that would be uh, truly affordable and truly uh, social. Um, and so this deal from the get-go to me, it didn't, it didn't smell right. I just didn't like it. I, it just didn't seem like the best deal for the taxpayers of the city. You, you make these decisions, generally real estate decisions are made in camera uh, because of the negotiation and privacy concerns and, and so on. Uh, and so uh, I've always been adamant in public uh, that it, when it does come, did come to public that uh, I was opposed to it um, for the various reasons I've mentioned. Uh, to see uh, then what happened as a result, uh, and you know, they went through a very, very, two court challenges. Uh, in the end, we won the court challenge. Um, uh, and then these strange documents were uncovered and reported uh, by you. Uh, which were mysterious, but are now being uh, denied as as real um, or or an accident. And so, I mean, you have to trust that that's the case. But it is, you know, I mean, we don't get involved in how buildings are are financed. We make decisions on on the, the building structure, uh, and you know, the density and where it is, things like that. That's that. But you know. It's, uh, it's strange that these kinds of things were filed. That is fair, that's fair enough, and I totally understand that. It, it, it is concerning to me that one of the senior partners who worked on that report now actually works for the city. I don't know if you know that. One of the Ernst & Young, who I think her name is Alina, she, she billed about $36,000 of that $140,000 bill while working at Ernst & Young. She was hired last month by the city. Um, does that raise any concerns for you based on the, you know, I've seen other articles that question Ernst & Young's closeness with certain clients in other countries. I mean, I'm not trying to throw them under the bus or anything. Uh, I'm just curious if that raises any red flags for you. I, I mean, I have to put my faith in the HR department here. Uh, I would 
bet she'd probably take a pay cut. Who knows? I don't know what her position is. Uh, you know, uh, generally, sometimes depending on your job, going from the private sector to government can be better or worse. Um, uh, you know, I think it's important for us in our, our role, we're to oversee the governance of the city and uh, not to be administrators. Uh, I find sometimes that Vision Vancouver get a little too much into uh, their finger into administration. I think they have proven that and, and part of the reason that we're in this uh, problem, I think, is because they haven't empowered staff the way they should be, that they've gotten too political uh, at City Hall. Uh, and I hope uh, with uh, the new city manager that that kind of uh, politicization is, it will come to an end. I can't guarantee it, but I certainly feel there's a slightly better mood here uh, with staff and, and the politics. But, uh, you know, Vision Vancouver, from the get-go when it got elected, immediately politicized senior staff. And, uh, and I think it's something they may have come to regret and it's because it proves that it's not the best way you have to kind of keep that separation from the politics and the staff and let them do that we have 10,000 staff uh, they know what they're doing I'm not an engineer I'm not a, I'm not a planner uh, you know I'm a politician whose job is to um, be a conduit from the what the people of Vancouver want or think they you know need for the city and uh, and and make sure that decisions make be made in, in the chamber uh, are the right ones George Affleck, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for watching. You know, if you haven't done it already, please click subscribe on our YouTube channel. And if you're looking for even more from The Rebel, well, check out our premium section. It will only cost you $8 a month, but you'll get to see exclusive content not seen on our YouTube channel.